Hello, welcome to this time of worship. My name is Brian Dodson and I'm a local preacher in the Beverly Circuit. We begin with the call to worship. We are here to worship the God who speaks a good word, who tells the story of our beginnings and opens up the prospect of never endings who shows us through Jesus Christ what impact a faithful, bold and loving life can make, who enables us through the Spirit's power to go forth in mission. The Gospel readings for the past several weeks have been from Matthew's Gospel. This week it's from a chapter that consists almost entirely of short parables concerning the Kingdom of Heaven or the Kingdom of God in some translations. And so we sing a hymn about the Kingdom of God. We sing in the faith number 255, the Kingdom of God is justice and joy. Prayer of Adoration God of the past, we adore you. You inspired our mothers and fathers in the faith, shared their sorrows and joys, and gave them courage. God of the present, we adore you. You have brought us together in new ways. Enfold us in your love and inspire the worship we offer. God of the future, we adore you. Take from us all that separates us from you. Show us your purpose for us in these different days and enable us to walk with you. That at the last we may take our place in your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. and the prayer of confession. Merciful God, forgive the sins of which we are ashamed. Forgive the sins of which we are proud. Forgive the sins which we do not notice. 
for your mercy's sake. Amen. The Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 to 46 and verse 51 and 52. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man happens to find treasure hidden in the field. He covers it up again and is so happy that he goes and sells everything he has and then goes back and buys that field. Also, the kingdom of heaven is like this. A man is looking for fine pearls and when he finds one that is unusually fine he goes and sells everything that he has and buys that pearl. Do you understand these things? Jesus asked them. Yes, they answered. So he replied, this means then but every teacher of the law who becomes a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who takes new and old things out of his storeroom. In that passage there are two little stories, scarcely long enough to be called parables, just as my reflection today cannot really be called a sermonette. The first tells us that the kingdom of God is like treasure hidden in the field. When someone has found, he hides it again, goes up happy and sells everything that he owns and buys the field. The second is rather similar. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he finds one of great value, he goes and sells everything he owns and buys it. So both stories are about something of immense value. So valuable that they each sell off everything they have and buy it. In each case, this thing of immense value is likened by Jesus to the kingdom of heaven. There is, though, a difference between the two stories. The man who finds treasure in a field does so by accident. Perhaps he's been ploughing the field or digging a well. Or maybe just out for a walk and sees some difference in the field that catches his eye. In the second story, the merchant is actually looking for fine pearls. He doesn't find them by accident. He seeks them out. He visits markets where pearls are being sold and examines them in turn. Some days he buys no pearls at all, but then he finds the perfect one, the one of immense value. Perhaps there are people who have discovered the kingdom apparently by accident. However it has happened, they have realised that they have found something special, something that matters, something that from now on would be the most important thing in their life. The merchant represents the person who is actively seeking God, or at least seeking meaning and purpose in life. Young people are often seeking meaning in their lives, but sometimes older people are still engaged on the search. Maybe you are in one category or the other. As we ponder these stories and Think about what they meant then and mean now. 
we should always be asking ourselves what it might mean today to be, to use Jesus' words towards the end of our passage, to be a disciple of the Kingdom of Heaven. How can we be sure in our thinking, our speaking and our living that we are both rooted in the old and also bearing the new fresh fruit of the Kingdom of Heaven?
So we come to our press winter session. Lord, we bring to you our concern for the world at this present time. Our concern for all affected by the COVID virus in whatever way, whether physically, mentally or economically. Lord, we bring to you our concern for our society, for the disadvantaged, those discriminated against, those who have lost their jobs or who are unsure whether or not they'll be able to return when all this is over. Lord, we bring to you our concern for the people whom we know and love, those ill in body or mind, the bereaved or sorrowful, the anxious or depressed. Lord, in Jesus Christ, we see your concern for the world and for each one of us. And we learn the truth that your name is love. We offer you our prayers and our lives in the name of Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. O Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. For a final hymn, I've chosen one by one of my favourite hymn writers, which address my favourite modern hymn writers, which addresses the situation I suspect many of us find ourselves in at the present time. Singing the Faith 641, when circumstances make my life too hard to understand.
And finally, the blessing. There is a God who cares for you passionately. A Christ whose yoke is as light as love. A spirit whose hope buoys up the downcast soul. So live gracefully and rest assured God is with you in all your days. Amen. Mm -hmm.